Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there today. Uh, recently, I made a couple of different VPN videos. The first one was tail scale, and then the follow-up to that was wire hole. And uh, today I wanna to show you a third VPN option, but I do want to bring uh, some attention to a comment that was made on the tail scale video. So someone in my comment section mentioned that Tailscale is a third party service and they're absolutely right. Uh, basically what that means is because this isn't self hosted and you are relying on the third party servers to connect your devices, uh, there is an inherent risk with that, uh, whether it's through Tailscale or uh, zero tier or any of the other VPN solutions that are out there. And more often than not, you really should look at a, a self hosted solution when you can. However, there are times when that's just not feasible. Uh, you may not, uh, you may not have the hardware available to you at the moment. So relying on a third party service may be your only solution in a quick pinch. So, uh, the, the reason I bring this up is because I, I, I hundred percent agree with the user that, that brought this up in my comment section. But I also want to go a little further than what they said there, and that is you should always do as much investigation on uh, a new service as you can before you actually implement it. So, uh, you know, whether whether it's zero tier or whether it's uh, tail scale or whether it's Google Drive or, or, or whatever, anytime you give a third party access to your hardware, there is an inherent risk and you should be aware of that and cautious of that and take whatever precautions you can to prevent any kind of malicious intrusion at all. So that's just something I wanted to bring up and, and have you keep in mind that uh, there is always an inherent risk anytime you use a third party service, or for that matter, there's always an inherent risk anytime you do a self hosted service too, if you don't know how to set that service up properly and protect your, your network, your hardware, yourself, etc. So with that out of the way, what I want to do uh, is talk a little bit about zero tier and show you how easy it is to install and set up. Uh, and today, what I want to do is actually show you how to set up on Windows. Uh, on, on a Synology device. However, they do support multiple different NAS devices as well as uh, a laptop, a Chromebook really is what it is that I've got uh, Manjaro Linux installed on. We're gonna see if we can get it installed on there as well. So uh, let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at Zero Tier. So here we are on Zero Tier's website. And like it says here, connect sec or securely connect any device anywhere. Um, they, they talk up at the top about how they raised a bunch of money to help accelerate the growth of their business, their infrastructure, that sort of thing. Uh, I will say that there is pricing attached to this, but that only applies to larger scale operations. Once you hit a certain number of nodes, I think it's like 500 nodes or sorry, 50, I guess, my bad. I was thinking, I guess I was seeing this one in my head, this 49 a month, but uh, you get up to 50 nodes for free and you have one admin account. Whereas if, if you need more than that, you can upgrade to their uh, professional series here for 50 bucks a month uh, and have up to 500 nodes and up to 10 admins on that network. So just something to keep in mind, we're gonna take a look at the free version here today. So uh, basically this is super easy to set up. Uh, if we go over to downloads, uh, right here, uh, right, first step is create a zero tier account. So let's do that. Uh, what we're gonna do is log in over here. Uh, you can either uh, create uh, an account here on the left side, uh, or you can use one of uh, these third party services to log in. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use Google to log in here uh, like so. And uh, here we are, it looks like I've already got a network here. So what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm actually going to scroll all the way uh, to the bottom, to the bottom, and I'm gonna delete this network Yep, that's absolutely fine. Go ahead and confirm that. So this is what you're gonna see when you first log in for the first time, and this is create a network. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I don't know why that one is still there. We're gonna use, there it is. We're going to use insane hues. And right here you can see a network ID. Uh, so, so really all you need to do is just click that, that little uh, copy or the, 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 the uh, clipboard there. I like so to copy that. Let's make sure, oops, oh, you know what? I screwed that up. I. Uh, I pushed the wrong button. So I'm gonna do copy and then paste. Okay, it's copied. So what I wanna do uh, next actually is come over to here. Uh, the second step is to download zero tier on any device to get a unique 10 digit node address and enter your uh, 16 network I or 16 digit network ID to join. So what we're gonna do, I've already got it installed right here. Uh, here we can see uh, down at the bottom uh, that we've got zero tier and here is my node. What I wanna do is actually join a network um, oops, 
that came down to the bottom of my other screen, and I'm just gonna paste that in there. Now, here's what I want you to notice is, there are some options here for allow managed, allow global, allow default, and allow DNS. So if you want to uh, have any of those uh, things that are accessible from, or be to be managed from the admin account, you can do that. So even as a user, you've got a little bit of flexibility as far as what you want uh, to, to have your network do. Uh, so I'm just going to do allow managed, that's fine for me, and I'll click join. And then what I'm gonna do, uh, so down here on the other screen, it says, this is Windows saying, hey, do you wanna do this, are you sure? Uh, I'm just gonna say yes, that's fine. And then what I'll do is I'll come back to here, I'm just gonna refresh uh, this page and uh, scroll down. Now here's, here, well, so right there, right there is my device, um, this 6BFOE. Uh, if, I, if I actually click this right here, uh, we can see that it's this node ID right here is the address that we're seeing right there. Now, uh, what I want to show before we get too much further involved in this is that uh, you can change the name of your network. You can give it uh, a description. You can decide whether or not you want this to be private or public. Um, I think public is probably a bad idea in most circumstances, but it is there as an option if you want it to be. Uh, you can add routes to this if you want to. Um, I'm not going to, uh, but you can if you, if you want. Uh, below that, you can uh, assign an IPv4 uh, address uh, range here, and there are several to choose from. I like to do something a little bit different uh, than what my, my home network is. I've got a 192.168 network. Uh, beyond that, uh, all of these, these have more numbers, but uh, I like to do something a little different. Let's just do this, like it says here, 172.26. blank. blank. Um, you can do IPv6 if you want to do that. Uh, below here, you can um, have a multicast uh, recipient limit. Uh, you can change that if you'd like. Below that, if you want to, uh, if you want to manage DNS through here, maybe you've got a pie hole set up somewhere that's available publicly, or you've got one that you're going to put on the network uh, on your on your zero tier network. You could actually assign that IP address to this, and uh, also block ads that way as well. Um, so below that, we've got a manually add a member. So if you know somebody's node ID, uh, like we showed down here, uh, this node ID right here, if you know somebody's node ID, uh, you can basically invite them if you'd like uh, by entering their node ID right there. And then of course, below that, there are some settings help that talks about what all of that stuff means. So I'm not gonna go into any detail on that since you can read for yourself, I'm sure. Now below that, um, we can uh, search for things if you wanted to search for, for a specific, um, uh, address or something like that. Sorry, I had a, had a moment there. Um, but basically it says right here, one, one device has joined this network. Now, here's the thing, just because I'm joined doesn't mean I'm actually on the network. What we actually have to do here is scroll down and check this box that says off. And right there will authorize them to be on the network. So that's how that works. It's really, really just that easy. Uh, there are some rules to follow. If you want to go in and do that, you can. Um, and then below that, of course, if you wanted to, uh, you could save your changes. Uh, also there, I guess there's another spot here where you could uh, email somebody if you wanted to do that. Uh, but that's that's basically all there is to installing this on Windows. It's really just that easy. So the next thing that we wanna do here is actually come back over to their downloads. And I wanna take a look at their NAS option right here. And we can see that Synology, they've got Synology, QNAP, My, WD MyCloud, and others. Now, of course, we're just going to focus on Synology right now, uh, just because that's the device I've got, thanks to Synology. Um, but right here it says it can be installed on any ARM, x86, or x64-based Synology NAS device. So what I'll do is I'll just click here, and right here it's gonna take me to a bunch of SPK files, and you need to be real careful about what you download here. To a certain degree, what I mean is that only certain images here or certain uh, file applications or application program applications, like APKs, these are SPKs. You have to make sure you get the right one. So uh, what I wanna do is scroll down to uh, right here where it says uh, zero tier underscore X64. I've got a couple of options depending on what version I wanna use. Uh, it's entirely up to you, I believe, as far as which of those you use. What I do wanna say though is if you choose the wrong one, it won't install. So I don't think that there's much of an inherent risk of accidentally installing the wrong one since it shouldn't install if you do the wrong one. So what I'm gonna do next is come over here to my Synology, like so. And then I'm gonna go over here to the package center. Uh, I'm gonna do a manual install. I'm gonna browse. I've actually already downloaded this once uh, today. So it's this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that up and I'm gonna click next. 
and then run after install. Great, let's do that. Now here's the thing that you need to be aware of as far as Synology is concerned. Um, when you come into your installed packages and go to this, it will open up. Uh, however, it's just not gonna work. Um, they, they actually mention uh, on their uh, page over here that um, once you installed, you can join vi visual, or vir uh, virtual networks from zero tier uh, web UI. Currently set up via Quick Connect is not supported. So let's just jump back over here. I'll show you what I mean. Let's scroll back up. Let's get my network ID. We'll come back over to here. We're gonna paste that in and click join and, and, and nothing happens. So what we need to do is actually jump over uh, to um, 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 Windows Terminal. Um, and then I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger. Like so, and then I'll do uh, SSH uh, DB tech at uh, Jarvis. Hopefully that'll work. Uh, like so, so now we are SSH'd into Jarvis. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna type in zero, uh, zero tier CLI uh, slash dash V, just so we make sure that it's installed. Uh, because we got a response of 1.4.0, that's the version we have installed. That means that we're actually up and running. Uh, so what we can do next is um, join, oops, join, not join. Oops, didn't put a space, oops. Oh, that's right. That's the other thing. I'm glad. I, I'm glad I actually made that mistake, because on uh, Synology devices you do have to run this as sudo or sudo, however you want to pronounce that. So I'm going to go ahead and join that network, and it's going to ask me for my root password. Now, 200 join. Okay, that means that it actually successfully connected. So what I can do is go over here. I can refresh this. Scroll down a little bit. And right here, we can see that here is another node. And this is uh, the one that we just connected. So I'm gonna go ahead and authorize that like so. And then what I'll do is I will actually uh, close this. And I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna open, we'll go to my pictures, that's fine. And over to here. Let's go ahead and actually uh, refresh this. Oh, of course, right as I reach for that button too, man right here. So this is the managed IP of that. So let's let's actually give this a name. We're gonna call this Jarvis. And I'm gonna call this uh, my PC, just so I can keep them straight. And then what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm just going to copy that like so. I'm going to bring up uh, a Windows Explorer window here. And I'm just going to do a double backslash and paste that in there and hit go. And right there is my Jarvis uh, Synology NAS. And to, to kind of prove that, what I'll do is I'll just do a double backslash and I'll type in Jarvis. There it is, it's the exact same thing there. So that's how easy it is to connect two devices on zero tier very, very quickly, very, very easily. So let's actually take a moment to jump over to my uh, to my Chromebook that I've got my Manjaro Linux installed on, and I will go ahead and get it installed there and see if we can't have some fun with it as well. Okay, so now we're on my Manjaro laptop. This is actually an old Chromebook that I converted to Linux years ago, made a video about it. Check that out if you want to. And here we are on the zero tier uh, website here. And if we come over here and, and take a look under Linux. Now, one thing I should note here is that this, uh, these instructions don't work with Arch Linux derivatives. Uh, so, so Manjaro is out. So what we're gonna do instead of using these commands is we're actually going to use Snap. So uh, what we're gonna do is come over to here. We're gonna click on activities. Uh, then we're gonna come over here to this terminal window right there. And you'll wanna make sure that you have Snap running. Uh, if, you, if you just type in uh, sudo uh, snap uh, version, like so, uh, you should get uh, this information. If you don't, uh, you'll wanna make sure that you install Snap and activate it. Make sure it's up and running so that you can move on to these next steps. And they're actually super easy. What we're gonna do is say sudo snap uh, install uh, zero tier. So now it's gonna go through this process of making sure that it's got everything that it needs, installing prerequisites, that sort of thing. Okay, so now that should be up and running. So what we wanna do is a sudo uh, zero tier dot zero tier CLI, oops, join. And then I need to come back over here to my zero tier account and find uh, my network ID, which will be uh, D5E5, 
200, join. Okay, so now what we need to do uh, is I will need to come back over to my desktop here. Okay, so here we are back on uh, my control panel for zero tier. If I scroll down a little bit, uh, nothing here yet. There it goes. I knew as soon as I said something, it was gonna do that. So we're gonna give this just a second here. Uh, obviously, we can see this is a new device. Uh, so I'm gonna call this uh, Manjaro like so. And uh, basically there we go. Uh, there is uh, our connection. Now we just gotta wait for it to have uh, an IP and fully uh, finish. Oh, you know what, uh, off. There we go, smart guy. Um, so we'll give this a second to get an IP address. I know as soon as I reach for this F5 key to refresh that it's gonna show up, it always does. Let's, uh, let's scroll down, there we go, there's our Manjaro. So right here, uh, there is that. So let's see if we can do Windows Terminal. Let's scroll up and let's do, uh, let's do SSH. Um, oops, tech at there. Uh, yes. Okay, so here we are. We're logged in to our Manjaro uh, setup here. Now, this is where things are gonna get a little weird. I don't know how to do this. Okay, so uh, this, this may actually work. So on the left side of my screen, over here where my mouse is currently going, that is my normal everyday desktop. And then over here, uh, well, on this other side of the screen that I can't move my mouse on, uh, where it uh, says activities and terminal, has all that stuff from Manjaro. Well, that, that's Manjaro. So uh, now that we are uh, connected to Manjaro uh, via my uh, via an SSH connection here, uh, what I should be able to do is uh, sudo uh, shutdown now. No, let's do, let's do uh, reboot now. Uh, no, now, there we go. Password. And just like that, we were able to reboot our uh, other device remotely using a zero tier network. So that is kind of zero tier in a nutshell. I know we've kind of covered uh, uh, the, the same principle a few different times uh, using, I, like I mentioned earlier, tail scale and wire hole, but I wanted to show you tail scale and how it is very similar. And of course, I'm just scratching the surface here as far as what you can do with it. There's a lot more to cover uh, if you wanted to dig more into that, or if you've got questions, that sort of thing, be happy to look into it and maybe make a follow-up video for this. Uh, again, if you're interested, let me know in the comment section down below. I, I, and I want to be transparent about this. Zero Terror is in no way involved in this video. They haven't sponsored anything. They, I've never reached out to them about this. Have not uh, collaborated with them in any way, shape, or form. This is uh, this is just a video I wanted to make to give you guys another option as far as uh, your third-party VPN solutions are concerned. And again, like I said earlier in this video, you definitely want to make sure to do your own research to find out if this is a good fit for you uh, with regards to what it can do, as well as its security and that sort of thing. Uh, before before you actually dive in and make this part of your infrastructure. So if you're interested in checking this out, of course, I will have a link to their website in the description down below, just zerotier.com. Um, but definitely check that out. Uh, while you're down there, there are some different ways you can support the channel if you'd like to do that. Of course, no obligation uh, ever for anybody to do that, but I do appreciate the people who have become channel members and who are patrons. Thank you guys very much for your continued support. Uh, it really does mean the world to me. So um, I know I don't give you guys much other than a little early access and your names here on the screen, um, but, but thank you very much for your support. It really does mean a lot to me. So I think with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.